you said it very well, but I want to extract that lesson deliberately, which is I'm hearing you say that proximity mm. to success is such a big deal. And, you know, I'm thinking of that quote that Jim Rohn gets credited with, you know, like you are the sum total of the people that you hang around, whether that's five people or 50 people. Um, and so more often, than not, more often than not, that is true, right? The proximity of the company that you keep ends up being, you know, who you become or become like, and you put yourself in a position to win instead of be tempted to go back to your old ways. <laughs> and the Mennonite community thing, it reminds me like my favorite show is The Office. And I think of Dwight Schrute and that, you know, Mennonite community is very much the right. Schrute Farms, the Beat Farm, you know, out, you know, the, the old ways. Um, and again, you, you can't get in too much trouble, again, putting yourself in the proximity of a town that's only 3,000 people or, you know, each time you chose proximity to insulate yourself, to protect yourself at first yeah. and then and then that enabled you to find the opportunities or really get more clarity as, okay, which direction I want to go. So proximity was your first step. And then the second step was, okay, now that I have clarity, now I can, I can sort of start the engine and start going. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I've there's a, a great book by Ken Coleman called The Proximity Principle. And it's that idea. I've continued to compound that. So I have, I've heard, I heard someone say, yeah, if you hang out with, five alcoholics, you'll probably be the sixth. If you hang out with five people that are obese, you'll probably be the sixth. If you hang out with five people that are broke, you're probably going to be the sixth. Yeah. And so if I ever want to be challenged in my fitness and my health, um, in my business, that we, I've continued to compound that proximity principle. Yeah. And in the early days of learning creative, it was also, I wanted to get in rooms or events around uh, trying to get on the phone, or can I buy a ticket, or can I go help, or can I go volunteer with somebody who was doing something I wasn't doing, uh, or had a skill set I wanted to learn, I wanted to get around them. I grew as a communicator um, from speaking on stage and different things that I now do today, from not just studying great communicators, but even basically apprenticing under them as well yeah. as part of my career. So the proximity principle is incredibly powerful. It resonates with me because that is the essence of this series. I mean, the whole reason I started to begin with is because I recognized that I am not where I, I wanted to be or, or I was not becoming who I wanted to become. And so in order to become like someone, you have to model their behavior. You have to know what they do. You have to do what they do. And then you can, you know, whether that's like, um, you know, uh, the uh, farmer's market and you're picking and choosing the certain things that you like, or you're, you're buying all of it, you know, behind the brand, right. Sitting down with the experts who've been there and done that. It's all about learning and modeling other people's behavior so that you can implement it into your own business, your own life and, and become who you want to become. So totally resonates with me. I like that. It even gives me goosebumps thinking about it. Um, okay. So from the youth ministry, uh, you started to kind of get your chops, you honed your skills. And what happened next? Yeah. So I've been doing video for 20 years since 2003. I've been doing YouTube for 16 because in 2007, if I did my math right, we started a YouTube channel for the church. And so that's super early. Two years after YouTube started, 15-minute um, time limits on uploads. So if we uploaded a pastor's sermon for 45 minutes, it had to be three parts. Yeah. No custom thumbnails. I mean, really, it's a year old because, you know, 05, um, it's the two dudes that launch it. Yeah. And then Google doesn't buy it till 06. Yeah. Right. So if you're 07, that's extremely early. Extremely I mean, early. There's just a handful of videos on the platform at that point. Yeah. And some of them are these camcorder following dogs on skateboards and other things. Right? All kinds of, yeah, like yeah. the weird Random uh, stuff. elephants at the zoo is like that first video. Yeah. yeah. And so, so super early in YouTube. And then what was really cool about this particular church that I was a part of was they had a whole kind of track of teaching, which was um, like, like they had this conference called Power, Power to Prosper or something. And it was the business, like a lot of people think about the Bible of course, and its application to family and life and just faith and how we treat each other, which is all the above. But you, you, it's much of a smaller niche to think about what does the Bible have to say about business owners and creativity and entrepreneurship. That was actually a lot of things I was learning in those days. And even the senior pastor's wife encouraged me to start a side hustle. She said, you know, 
you've learned this skill of video and you've shown promise in it, but I was all self-taught and just voraciously learning. And there wasn't all the resources. There was no behind the brand. Yeah. There was not, uh, there was like early companies, Philip Bloom, I'm sure you're familiar. I bought oh, yeah. his DVD for $300 on the Canon 7D to learn all his settings. And Still Motion was this cool wedding videographer kind of community that made these incredible wedding videos all their tools and tutorials and some of their training. Um, I found that on Vimeo in those days. So I'm like learning. And so in 2009, I started Clear Vision Media, basically as a, as a solo business owner that had a diversity of offerings. Mm -hmm. I'd make people's websites, help them with socials early, but mainly do video production, wedding videos, hip hop music videos, YMCA, local ads for local baseball games in Marysville, Washington, local restaurant videos. And uh, so that was kind of the next piece. And then fast forward just into 2000, I think 11, I think media started 2010. As far as the first upload, August of 2010, I started talking about the camera gear and different tools I was using because there was demand for that. And we started this other project called Think International with my friend Jeff, which was like a faith-based interview show uh, right around 2010. So immediately out of the gate, it was like church in 2007, that channel, Clear Vision Media was 2009. Think Media and Think International was like 10 and 11. And that put me super early into YouTube. Um, and review style videos. You review, know. And so I started to learn about affiliate marketing, started to make money online, talking yeah. about cameras or lenses through affiliate marketing, and started to really obsess over YouTube as the second largest search engine and the search-based opportunity there, um, and started to have success ranking videos. Yeah. And that was, that's, I would also rank, like I ranked for Bell, Be, uh, Bellingham wedding video, videographer. So I was getting all these inbound leads as a small business owner in that regard. I ranked the Mexican restaurant video as you would, zero other restaurants <laughs> at all were thinking especially. Yeah. And, and so started to kind of cut my teeth on, even to this day, what we've honed and perfected and expanded on in regards to search-based content, setting up passive income connected. If your videos are getting views for weeks, months, and years to come, and there's a way to monetize like affiliate marketing. And so eventually today I wrote the book, YouTube secrets, and we have online courses that teach this stuff. I was in the trenches for a ton of years. And I also was freelancing during that time. Clear vision kind of stayed on where I would build out the YouTube channels specifically kind of for some pastors and authors taking like their messages and cutting them down into seven minutes, titling them really well, yeah. connecting it back to whether a new book they were launching and or an email list they were building because they had an event or they had. So um, to the point of proximity principle, one of the things that I also loved about all the above is I did feel that someday I wanted to do this stuff. I wanted to write books, have events, teach and be an educator. But I love the opportunity to be paid, even if I wasn't paid very much, because I was more into it for the education. If I could do this for others or use their budget on ad spend, and I, you know, so I had a lot of immersive experience in basically digital marketing and yeah. video marketing.